Welcome to Yahoo Finance Presents. I am here with the one and only Adina Menzel. Hi. Adina, thank you so much for coming. I'm so excited to talk to you. You too. Thanks for having me. There is a lot to get to, but I want to first start with the new Disney Plus documentary you have coming out, Which Way to the Stage. Tell me about this project, why it's important to you, and what fans can expect. Yeah, Which Way to the Stage, the title is obviously a nod to my very first professional role, Maureen, from the Broadway show Rent. Um, but it's also <laughs> apropos because it's about um, a mother um, trying to be present in her personal life and also pursue her passion of performing and how to compartmentalize, how to prioritize all of that, and literally which way is this day. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. So why do this now? And what can fans expect to see from this? Well, I think it's pretty intimate. It's kind of um, it's kind of raw and not your typical um, tour documentary where you just see a lot of performance aspects, the glamour. It's a lot of um, unglamorous stuff. Um, but I wanted people, I don't know, I feel like it's for me, um, as an artist, it's important for me to be vulnerable um, and authentic. I feel like it's the way that I connect best with my audience. So um, I've really gone there and I allow people to have a window into my soul and my life. And hopefully they'll see some of themselves in the experience because it's not just about... Um, being a performer on the stage, you don't have to be a great singer or anything. It's about all of us that need to, you know, that don't want to compromise who they are and the things that they love and what they do in their life that makes them happy and fulfilled. And in the documentary, you said that Frozen was a defining moment for you. Why? What made this so different from all your other projects? Well, it's just that things go, there's so many highs and lows in this business. And so in between some of my biggest things, there's been definitely times where I felt like my career kind of dipped. And so when this came about, um, it was right after I was going through some personal stuff and it just felt, it was just this incredible gift to me, you know, and the fact that it kind of resonates with so many young people and that the messaging is so important about this empowerment and really um, embracing who we are and what makes us different in the world. It was just, it's more than just a job, you know, mm -hmm. it was, it, it means something in a very profound way. And as you've alluded to, you've been in this industry for a really long time. We've seen the industry change. There's been this emphasis on streaming. I think Disenchanted <coughs> is a perfect example of that with mm -hmm. Enchanted being a box office hit. But if you want to see the sequel, you need to have Disney Plus. So what are your thoughts on sort of all the changes going on right now, especially when it relates to the streaming boom? You know, I don't know. I miss I miss going to the movies myself. I miss that people aren't going to the movies. And I, I love being in a packed movie theater and experiencing that, probably because I'm a creature of the theater. I also love that it's so accessible to people. Um, I mean, obviously, they have to pay for subscriptions and stuff like that. But, but the fact that as families, we can all sit together in our home and watch something um, together. So I think there are pros and cons to both. And let's talk Broadway because I am a theater nerd and you are- Don't say theater nerd. No, it's, it's, it's a good thing. Nerding. It's a good thing. Exactly. But you are so tied to your roles, Wicked, Rent, and the industry has gone through a lot since COVID. We've seen a lot of shows shut down. We've seen a pullback in theatrical attendance. So where do you think the industry goes from here? Does it need a refresh and can it be what it once was? I think it's actually- revitalized right now people were missing it so much that they're going and I, I've been to a couple plays and they're just they're wearing their masks because you're sitting so close to one another but it's full of that energy again I think that everyone needs live theater you know we need to have that shared experience um, uh, seeing something for the first time together and being a community so I don't I, I feel like after the pandemic, it's really come back. Maybe feel people feel a little, uh, have a little trepidation about it, but I've been to a couple of shows and it's it feels really back to the norm. I'm seeing Funny Girl very soon and I'm very excited oh, about great. that. With Leah Michelle, yeah. I know you worked with her. Yes, I love Leah. Yeah, so I'm very pumped about that. And we were just talking about streaming. What are your thoughts on Broadway musicals going to streaming? We saw that with Hamilton and Disney Plus. Oh. It's obviously a different viewing experience, but like you were saying, more access. Yes, that's exactly right. You're right. Um, it's great for people all over the country who maybe can't get to New York City to see. Um, but it's also, just so people know, it's 
a completely different okay. experience because when we're on stage, we're trying to um, reach the back row. And when a camera is close to you, it's a different thing. First of all, you can see our stage makeup too much. Uh -huh. um, but the I, spitting, Jonathan. Like, exactly. Yes. <laughs> it's, um, the accessibility is, is amazing, but it's nothing like being there live. I totally agree. And, and I have to selfishly ask, would you want to return to the stage? Is there a dream role that you haven't played yet, maybe? Of course I want to get back to the stage. It's my happy place. Mm. Um, it's what I love the most. Uh, I, I'd rather continue my tradition of trying to originate roles. So there are definitely a few projects that I'm working on from their very early stages. And that whole process of originating a new musical is very near and dear to me, this feeling of um, the excitement of working on it with the composers and the writers from the embryonic stages and having them write a new song with you in mind or a scene and watching it go through all of its incarnations is just part of the process that I love. And the Wicked movie is currently in development. I know you've spoken with both Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo. Mm -hmm. How have those conversations been and are you involved in any type of capacity? No, they don't need me involved. <laughs> yes, um, they do. <laughs> <laughs> no, all I've done is call them and wish them the best and and tell them that I'm here for them if they ever want to sort of uh, touch touch base and and I can remind them of sort of where it all came from and the impetus for certain things if they want that from me but they're so supremely talented the two of them that um, they won't need my help. Well, finally, uh, I want to talk about this change happening at Disney because you've been part of this family for so long. Now we have Bob Iger back as CEO. How do you feel having him back at the helm? Oh, <laughs> I love him. I've actually met him. Um, I've gone to a couple functions with him and he's um, such a gentleman and really charismatic mm -hmm. and um, is such a, a believer in the classic traditional Disney and what makes Disney Disney. So um, being a part of the Disney family is just, it's been quite, um, it's been very rewarding for me. It's, um, they're so supportive and I love the process of watching all the animators work, um, like with Frozen. I've been a fly on the wall. I don't just come in and mm. record Elsa's voice. I love to see everyone's process because the real, the real wizards behind the curtain are all of those creative people. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us and covering all of that. This Way to the Stage airs December 9th on Disney+. Plus. Thank you.